I have a separate question, actually. This has to do with, with taxes, though, and it has to do with philanthropy. And one of the great things, and clearly you are an example of it, is that you have given away your, your vast fortune, $50 billion so far, uh, we should say, and another $50 billion is in the foundation itself. Um, but there has been a question about the idea that vast fortunes in this country are able to be moved from the private sector into a foundation without paying tax. So the shares of Microsoft that you were able to generate, the shares that, that, um, that Warren Buffett were able, was able to generate, there's no capital gains on that. There's no step up on that. And so the, the, the US taxpayer, the US citizen, it's not clear that they are beneficiaries uh, of, of your success to the extent you believe that they should be. What, what do you think of that? Would you, would you ever be in favor of taxing uh, philanthropy in that way of some sort? We can raise taxes uh, in a lot of ways, including uh, you know, making uh, some gifts to foundations more taxed. We, we, we have a lot of room. The current thing is not either in terms of encouraging philanthropy or uh, discouraging and forming new business. We're not close to the limit. I mean, there was a time where we had 70% uh, taxation rates um, now, you know, you do get some people wasting a lot of time looking for tax loopholes if you're not careful there. But, you know, we're, we're not uh, at the limit on that. In my case, I had, because of the amount of money I put in, uh, my deduction expired. You know, you can only take 30% of adjusted gross income. And so 90% of my potential deduction, uh, you know, didn't get used. The way Warren does it, he doesn't have much personal income, so his... Uh, gift, yearly gift, which is worth over two and a half billion, he doesn't get that much tax advantage. But both Warren and I are glad in whatever way to pay a fair right. bit more in taxes. And it is important to separate out the question of it, should rich people pay more in taxes? The answer is yes. For whatever remainder of money they have left over, I do think philanthropy is a good thing. Uh, I think it plays that 2% of the economy plays a role that neither the private sector or the government uh, are able to do in terms of various innovative approaches to save malaria or nutrition or trying out new models of education through things like charter schools. So I, I stick right. up for the, even once you change the tax system, the remainder, it's okay, in my view, to have philanthropy. But what do you think of this larger idea that underneath all of this, you, you hear people who say there shouldn't be billionaires? in society, that if you really understand what this wealth tax is about, uh, in fact, uh, one of our authors at the New York Times uh, described it almost as a cigarette tax with the ultimate goal of there being less of it. Um, you know, maybe I'm just too biased to think that if you create a company that's super valuable, that at least some part of that uh, you should be able to have uh, a little bit for consumption and, and hopefully the balance to do philanthropic things. Uh, if, now, there are people who think that politically those fortunes being used for things like lobbying or giving to candidates, that that's tilting the playing field. You know, the last election was not, or at least the presidential piece, was not a money-driven phenomena. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the candidate who spent more did not, did not win in that case. But I agree, the First Amendment wasn't designed at a time when rich people could essentially buy this big megaphone. I choose not to participate in large political donations. Uh, there are times it might feel tempting to do so, and you know, there are other people who choose to do so, but I just don't want to grab that gigantic mm -hmm. megaphone. Okay, but let me ask you then about this, and this is, uh, this is the author of Winner Takes All. You, you know this book. You know, okay. you know, you know who I'm talking about. Um, he says, as the author says, they make giles, uh, uh, gigantic piles of money. This is, this is people of great wealth and have tricked politicians and the media into giving them an exceptionally loud voice in policy discussion. There's still a question of should any one person, however amazing, have that much say over public life? What do you think of that idea? Well, we have a democracy, which is one person, one vote. Uh, and certainly, the democracy is not electing all people that I vote for. Uh, and 
I do think it's okay to talk to experts. You know, during Brexit, there was a person who said, you know, we've had enough of experts. I do think that if you want to talk about software innovation, that at least listening to the ideas of people who've been successful in that area isn't such a bad thing. I mean, you could you literally say that we can't talk to politicians if you really think that uh, sharing our opinions about, say, climate change or malaria or malnutrition or charter schools, you know, if that's really bad, uh, you know, this group does have more free time. They have proven that, you know, they're energetic and so can solve some things. And often they get into a phase of their life, like Steve Schwartzman is putting a lot of his energy mm -hmm. and thought into very creative and I think what will be uh, positively impactful philanthropy.